Cheers. <laughs> so I have uh, Marina Feeney in the house. Literally in. Literally in, in, in the, the house, house. In the Creosote Casita. She's been uh, my uh, artist resident. <laughs> artist in residency. Mm -hmm. She's been staying at my house for the past week and it's been uh, pure medicine. Oh, same. Truly. Like yeah. I, it's so funny because I've lived here for three years now and. We actually filmed this like before I left for Bali and in the rainbow bathhouse before she had to move out. And it was like two hours because we just like keep going. I was like, girl, we need to like trim this. So let's record it at the house. <laughs> Maybe we could flash to like a moment there just so people could see. Yeah, I'll definitely like put some B-roll in right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so she's been staying at my house because she's about to embark on the next phase of her journey. Yes. And if you don't know who Marina is, she's this incredible, psychedelic, beautiful artist oh. and incredible <laughs> creatrix of sacred spaces. And this woman, she's been such medicine in my home oh. and her <laughs> radiance and just her whole aura is is something that cannot be ignored. And what I love about oh. Marina is that through her expression of who she is, she's like the epitome of helping like inner child healing. Aww. And I think it's pretty beautiful that she's been at my house during this time because I'm closing the chapter of like focusing all of my business on inner child healing and focusing more on seeing that as like mission complete. And now let's help these people who are healed, like really shake shit up and share their medicine in the world through marketing and business strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's just been really amazing to have her here. And with all these fires that have been going around around us, this um, apple fire, and we had the water fire in white water that um, was out, but the apple fire has still been going and the smoke. And I don't know, it just feels like a very rise of the Phoenix. And so having Marina here, we've been listening to like, 90s and early <laughs> 2000s pop and like dancing like crazy watching countless episodes of curb your enthusiasm <laughs> and pen 15 and just like being silly yeah. and bud loves her and we've just been i don't know it's just this is what i've been calling it in joshua tree that i've been yearning for is just like sisterhood we're very woke and aware of the same things going on in the world and there's just no filter and so I just wanted to start by saying thank you for being you. Oh, thanks for being you. And thank you for housing me in this uncertain time of transition. And just, yeah, really appreciate it. So wholeheartedly. Oh, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, it's been such a such a fun week. Right. So right now we're drinking. Um, Marina calls it Sabrina's Quarantinis. I had like frozen watermelon and lemon and mezcal because you know me i love my mezcal and uh so we're gonna be drinking these drinking these we as we spill share. the tea <laughs> spill the astrology spirituality everything is free believe yourself but never um, I don't know. Yeah, I was like, where are we going? Believe your fantasies. <laughs> Fulfill your fantasies. That's what, I don't know. So let's talk about your <laughs> fantasies because your art is just pure medicine for so many people. And it is like when you go into your spaces, they're, <laughs> they're fantasy lands and yeah. experiences. I remember when I went to the Rainbow Bath House with um, my best friend Lisa. It was the first time actually ever being at your house. And we were at a party. I was like, this is the trippiest, coolest, like <laughs> wildest place. And it's so Marina. And I just Aww. really appreciate your radical self-expression. And so I want to talk about, you know, more than just finding joy in those spaces of uncertainty, but how do we continue to stay in our truth during these moments of uncertainty when the world outside of us may do its best to steer us or to tell us what's right, what's wrong? But we know deep within, with integrity, what yeah. is our truth. Yeah. Um, I think what has fueled me in general in life is people telling me no <laughs> and people trying to get me down or belittle me or shut me down and using that as fuel to prove people wrong. Everyone is wired differently and... You know, I totally understand 
that, but I think that for me, it's been this journey of like being bullied or being like told no, or being told that, um, I can't do multiple things or I can't do that or I can't do this. And it's like, if we just stop listening to other people's opinions and start listening to our higher self and like what brings us joy, like we can all collectively be more in alignment with ourselves and our truth and have a better reality because so many people, I mean, unfortunately society tells us that, you know, we got to go to college. We have to do this. We have to like be married at this age. We have to have children. We have to do this and that and like not follow certain passions and, or listen to our parents or listen to so-and-so or worry about people's opinions, society's opinions. And when we can just like literally visualize shutting all those people's opinions down like we can find ourselves and truly witness like the growth of our ultimate you know fantasy of what we as individuals want and um I just am someone who radically believes in finding your truth and sticking by it and also sticking to your happiness and not compromising your happiness for others all the time because I feel like we're taught to just be like complacent and listen to authority and listen to who's in charge but if people don't defy the system how do we have change and progress (laughs) and that's that goes like (laughs) for the individual too it's like if someone in your life is making you feel like shit and not worthy of the things you want get them the fuck out of there like we don't need that shit anymore well i think that's what a lot of these times have been i think quarantine has been a lot a time with all these planets retrograding as well yeah it's been so and you're you know we've been it's a sacred disruption that of what life has been yeah you know the routine or whatever that there is a lot more introspection and a lot more reevaluating of what am i willing to take with me to life post quarantine COVID shit, you know, like what are my new non-negotiables? What actually doesn't resonate? What no longer serves? And I think the people who've done the work, the work for a while, it's, it's been an easier transition because they have the tools, but yeah. people who are probably a part of the second wave of the great awakening. Cause I think a lot of us had that first initiation really deep in 2012. Yeah. Definitely. And we're finishing the seven year cycle of that. Yeah. That it's, um, it's a time for us to understand that all that's coming up right now is the completion yep. of, you know, the patriarchal systems, the Piscean way of being where it's like us versus them. I mean, that's why we're seeing so much division right now. Yeah. And we've been seeing, I feel like breadcrumbs of that based off of like racism and bigotry. There's been that division of belittlement and um, hierarchical standards, I guess you could say would be the best thing. Um, And then we were all getting closer and, you know, there was a lot more conversation happening and then swoosh the wave came in where there was more division. Yeah. And I think this is, again, part of the testament of not looking for that external validation of self Yeah. Um, to dictate what's right or wrong. And I think one of the most toxic places lately has been Facebook. Yeah. Um, because you have a lot of relationships on Facebook with people that you haven't really been in touch with or yeah. like close with. And so as soon as you go out there and start speaking your truth or sharing information that goes against the status quo, you're deemed as crazy or um, like wild, a conspiracy theorist, like all of these different um, labels to for people to for like the, the mind to grasp, just like we've had labels of race and sexual orientation or what have you for the mind to grasp and like categorize people, I guess in a way, then seeing that each of us here brings something unique to the table and we need to come to a place of the agree to disagree. And even if you do disagree, just having that discernment on who you want in your inner circle or not. Yeah. And still loving those people that you disagree. And that's part of the test. Yeah. I think is really like rather than, being like, oh, I'm better than, or like judging that person, just look, taking it with a grain of salt and like offering that compassion Yeah. because no one can dictate the amount of work you've done, your belief system, um, how you're choosing to create your life. 
Yeah, I definitely think people need to slow down on the aggression and um, really envelop themselves in compassion for themselves and other people because there's so much pointing fingers and just being like, oh, this person's doing this and tattletailing and all this stuff. It's just to stay in your own lane, worry about yourself, you know, let people do what they're going to do. I mean, people are so consumed with other people's lives and not enough on themselves and the inner work that they should be doing. Um, also, that's partly because of society, like telling us that we should be numb and medicated and sick and not healthy. And that includes mentally healthy. And I firmly well, that's believe been so in, taboo for so long. I firmly believe in mental health as wealth. You know, like if your mental health is going great, your body will be more in alignment. Your physical health will be more in alignment. And it goes back and forth. It's a it's a it's a symbol symbiotic relationship with each other they have to both be in equilibrium to like you know to function properly yeah and it's just we need to make that a priority in this country instead of sending people to jail like we need to get people help and mm -hmm. have more compassion this world in general doesn't have enough compassion it's just very like it's just aggressive. It's so patriarchal and it's time for the divine feminine to rise. In my opinion, it's, it's time for women and queer and for indigenous people, people of color, black people, people with disabilities to fucking rise from this shit and like to take out the patriarchy and the patriarchal beliefs that have been so in place for so long. It's just like, I'm passionate about Ugh, just giving people a voice who've been unseen for so long and you know it's different with there's so many different types of art but like the type of art that I want to make is such a mix of like holding space holding sacred safe space um being a part of media that um gives these types of people voices or the, their stories voices or put them into like you know positions of power and I would like to be a definite change in that um you know like just <sighs> yeah I feel very passionately about um using my privilege to change things as much and deeply as possible and um yeah to create jobs and to have art be be a huge facet of healing and growth for for people because I feel like art and color will heal the world in a very big way. People want to laugh at that all they want, but I firmly believe in it. It's helped me. It's helped so many other people. Um, and I think that the things that have been laughed at before will finally be taken seriously. The people that have been laughed at will finally be taken seriously. Um, it's so important for all facets of media and politics and everything to have a diverse narrative and diverse structures, diverse people in charge, because then things can be more equalized. And um, yeah, I feel like this time right now is about discovering the unseen and really digging deep into yourself, but also into the system and unveiling what has been hidden from us for so long and fighting back and demanding change <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, as much as things are really strange, I'm pretty stoked to be a part of this shift and to be alive right now mm -hmm. and coming from a place of having struggled with depression and not wanting to be alive and, and feeling as existential crises throughout my life. Um, I feel like the deeper purpose of my existence and so many others that I meet and cross paths with, like we are here at this moment in time for a reason. And that is pretty beautiful as much as it's like really intense mm -hmm. in moments and there's a lot of despair. I want to maintain and continue this mission of joy and helping people find their inner joy daily. Um, and that's, you're doing that. and that's not that's not to bypass it's not right. to bypass anything it's really to like look at the facts let's look at look at the reality 
and then let's transmute it. And me and Sabrina are both alchemists of <laughs> taking really intense, you know, deep realities and transmuting them. And I think that is a gift. Mm. And I think we're here to help other people activate that in themselves too. Mm -hmm. because I think we're taught to be silenced and to sugarcoat things, to be drunk, to be sick, to, you know, not question. And I'm here to question and I'm here to stir things up mm -hmm. in a fun and rainbow-tastic way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're friends. <laughs> I'm here about shaking shit up too. Yeah. I mean, I just think there's no accident why we came here and there's no accident why we've experienced what we have because once we've been able to overcome, you know, our own challenges and battles, we are able to infuse more of that compassion yeah. and remember that the Aquarian age is about connection and community and, and, and recognizing that while we're all in this together, each of us play various roles into yeah. the evolution of humanity. Yep. Yeah. And so some are, doing the deeper work and like holding the space for that. Others are speaking up and doing that work or yeah. we all have different parts of this. And I feel like the more you allow yourself to embody your truth and like, and, and be in your integrity where there's nothing or no one outside of you that can steer you or play small or tell you you're wrong. Yeah that's when you start to magnetize and align to the others that are in that same position as you. And while we may all have different stories, there's very similar themes going on. Definitely. Like I've, I've struggled with depression my whole childhood and doing the work that I've done with plant medicines and Kundalini yoga and just like really devoting myself and hiding in this cave I call Joshua tree. <laughs> um, I've, you know, been able to, recognize my own patterns, heal my own ancestral wounding in that space or whatever, and teach from that, that place and be compassionate and choosing to be like a coach, mentor, whatever title you want to call me. And I could still call myself an alchemist in that way to just uh, let people know through storytelling. I think there's a lot of power in storytelling and our art is a story in yeah. itself can tell storytelling and express who we are because you know, our art, whether it's through multimedia, whether it's through jewelry, whether it's through sacred spaces, whether it's through uh, storytelling, creating a podcast, mm -hmm. creating programs, you're going to tell a lot about what that person has been able to overcome in their journey through their art. Yeah. And I think with you, like you said, navigating through a lot of depression, I think that's why you bring so much colorful inner child joy mm -hmm. is because you've alchemized that depression and created that as your art yeah. to help other people who may be challenged yeah. to help other people who, you know, may have felt alone. And it's been really fascinating since you've been here too. We were talking about like MTV and like the shows <laughs> we would watch, like how we would watch Undress, like when our, our mom went home, went to bed or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. things like that. Like there's similar stories like that mm -hmm. and a lot of um, those patterns that we can start seeing. And while you may have had different experiences, we have very similar ones too. And I think the more we allow ourselves to feel comfortable of being vulnerable and sharing that without any shame, that again brings in more compassion and that again brings in more of this community yeah. that then we can join forces and like come up against anything that's trying to steer us from that, those spaces. Yeah. I definitely think the patriarchy is dismantling because the wounds are finally coming up to the surface and or they've the been worked through yeah, already. And the systems are restructuring because they it's time to change. It's just time. It's astrologically time to change. It's time to change for the collective consciousness to unify. I mean, I'm a firm believer in unity consciousness and, you know, ridding division and just being a part of community, I think we're not really taught young about community. It's like we're taught about like just, I don't know, just a lot of separatism. And um, it's just pretty 
ugly to see like that happening right now but I also see a lot of you know under everything I see a lot of community coming together and raising awareness and I think that's really powerful um I like to focus on the betterment of the future and the future that I want and fantasize about instead of focusing on the negatives of this moment Mm -hmm. in time um it's really hard to do, but if you can focus every single day on the little things that you're grateful for, it just helps your day like so much more in my opinion. Like I've been able to reroute my brain patterns in such a drastic way just through affirmations. Um, I don't know if this is off topic, but like just to go as an example of like self body image, you know, like it's taken me 30 years to like, finally accept my body and to love it deeply and to feel good on my own and to not need someone I've been in pretty much serial monogamous relationships for my entire 20s from like 18 to like almost 30 years old and um I am alone for the first time (laughs) as an adult and um it's pretty amazing the amount of growth I've done just in a year of being single And I feel like more women especially need to feel their inner power Mm -hmm. and their autonomy and what they enjoy by themselves instead of what they seek with another person and feeling validation through someone else. And it doesn't matter what gender or what sexuality or orientation you are. It doesn't matter. It's, but I think for women especially, there's just the stigma of like, needing to reproduce at a certain time period, needing to um, be married at a certain time period, whatever it is. And I, you know, for me, like my fuel is different than what I've been taught to. And as it's all, it's also like gender identity. Like I identify as non-binary, um, a, a non-binary femme. And I it took me like so long to even like realize that I've always felt like in between genders since I was like a little kid. Um, having had like a lot of body hair like really young and having a a mother who like really shamed that and like had me get like you know like waxed like really young I just feel like I've always felt this like in between and not feeling like a woman enough or not feeling like sexy enough and validation from men and I'm tired of it and I, I feel like it is like one of my sole missions to help other people like come to their power as individuals and autonomously and not look for validation through others, especially sexually, because there's a lot of sensuality and sexuality that can happen and empowerment that can happen just with ourselves and by ourselves. And the more whole we can feel on our own, the more healthy we can have with other people. Like Mm -hmm. we can have healthy relationships with other people so much more authentically. And it's just, I've, I only really know like unhealthy relationships <laughs> in my lifetime so far. Um, and I feel like I'm doing this really solo journey right now to reprogram myself. And in that growth, I finally feel whole on my own. And it's like taken me so long to feel that. And I just want other people to know that you can get there and it's not impossible. And like, of course, like having a significant other and a partner is amazing, but how can you show up for someone else in a relationship if you don't show up for yourself first? And I feel really passionately about that (laughs) because it's like when you show up for yourself, you're just fueling all of your other relationships. When you're being honest with yourself and honest with others, it's just life's better. And I feel like it's a really good time right now to especially just be radically honest with yourself and others because the time is now there's no more time to waste in my opinion. And it's like, why? Yeah. I don't know. It's like, why are we wasting our time with people that aren't in alignment with us? Mm -hmm. Why are we having friendships that are, are taking away our power than feeling our like happiness? I just, you know, it's like really look at your friendships and your relationships and even family, like people like always make excuses for family. And I'm like, blood is blood. But when you can mentally connect with someone like and feel seen, it's a whole different feeling, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? And I just believe like 
your soul family is out there. And even if you feel alone right now, you sticking to your truth is going to attract other people that are in their truth. And that will, you know, benefit your life greatly than allowing someone to be a succubus to your life. And I've just recently in the last year really rid and shed of people in my life who have taken so much energetically from me. And I'm finally now for the first time putting myself first and being like, you know what? Like, I don't feel bad anymore. I don't feel bad anymore. I just, I can't. And, um, you yeah. choose not to, it's more that you yeah. can't, you just say you don't consent to that anymore. I don't consent to energy vampires. I don't consent to demonic energies coming into my life anymore. And it's hard when you're kind of on angelic realms and you want to help people and sometimes the very lost souls try to really leech and take mm. everything from you and attack you verbally or whatever it is. It's like, no. And that self-love is demanding that boundary. And it's, yeah, it's crazy when I really think about like how long, how long it's taken me to see what has needed to change in my life with myself to feel the most freedom I've ever felt. And right now I don't have a house, which is, it, it's just strange. Like I, I'm always the one to take care of people. I'm always the one to have, you know, the, the nurturing, you know, I am like, I um, have a motherly instinct in me to take care of people in my community. And this is the first time in a very long time that I don't have like this grounding structure. Um, and now I'm really finding my people right now, like on the road and like, in this fluid way of living. Um, so it's, I'm really surrendering like every day to, you know, the day <laughs> and to the future <laughs> and it's great. And I, I feel like it's been going really, uh, I feel like I've gone through a lot in the last like month of this and I'm really grateful for Sabrina just allowing me to be here and just kind of decompress from a lot and just, ground and to be friends and to even connect deeper with our friendship it's just it's awesome yeah <laughs> I've had so much fun this week and honestly yeah. like I said having you here has been an answer to a prayer and even just what you just shared like I had a lot of judgment my whole life being alone my whole life yeah. like not being in relationship because I had depression and I've had a lot of like unworthiness in that space yeah and I pushed like the person I love the most away because I felt like I was one damaged, but two on a deeper level, I knew I had a lot of work to do on myself yeah. to find that autonomy with myself to not be codependent on anyone. And so that's what me hiding in the cave, <laughs> um, the past like seven, eight, almost eight years now um, has really brought is just how can I find that wholeness within myself so that I'm not codependent on my parents, I'm not codependent on my friends, I'm not codependent with a partner, yeah. but just really just like be in that space of surrender and really transcend uh, traumas or stigmas around, like you said, like being in relationship by this time, being married by this time, like having kids by this time. And a lot of that's been programmed through media and society as well. Yeah. But to me, I know this is like the most embodied, most grounded and the truest I've ever felt to myself. And because I'm in that space, I've been magnetizing and calling in and aligning with people like you who people like as we birders call it the default world, like they don't understand me or if I'm sharing stuff online that's happening in the world, they're telling me you're better than that, but they weren't actually there for me when I needed them. Yeah. But the friends that I do have that are in alignment, they're actually like, and again, it's not that I need that outside validation of like who I am or who I need to be, but it is nice to hear like, the feedback from yeah. people, especially when you've been alone yeah. your whole life and just feeling seen in that way as well. Like, of course I see myself, but as a projector, I like really quality time and words of affirmation are really my two strong love languages. Yeah. And when the going gets tough, like that's fuel to keep me going, mm -hmm. you know? And so 
I do feel like in my life too right now with you said astrologically as well there's a lot of shifts happening and to me it also feels like what's been going on is the answer to our prayers in a, in a way and while I'm very big on researching on what's happening beyond like the mainstream agenda or expression and that's what fueled me to become a gonzo journalist back in 2010 2011 mm-hmm was that I was pissed with the way that um, mainstream media was talking about the rave community, which was the community that helped me, like, stop me from suicide, yeah. really. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I've been really fighting that um, conversation or um, that, you know, confrontation in a way and choosing that, like I said, John Lennon's been really coming through lately. I've been feeling his energy. Um, him and Yoko of War is over if you want it. And that's why I'm shit. I don't want to be teaching so much about trauma based. Like I have plenty of information that people can go on, but yeah. moving forward and not getting stuck in these consciousness tra- traps and loops is a really important thing that we also need to um, understand and recognize. And it takes time to look at that because our ego would be like, no, 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 you're crazy. Or like, you're just trying to like come up with an excuse in that way. Yeah. But it takes a really brave soul to surrender to and get out of our comfort zones um, to really start realizing what's on the other side of what it is we've been going through and starting to make those habits and those commitments. And I don't like to use the word discipline so much as I like to use the word devotion. Yeah. And being devotion to that, that mission and that soul's purpose. And Mm -hmm. so I know for you, your mission has been to like cultivate these really sacred, safe spaces and expressive and playful and fun. And I've been having so many visions since Marina's been here. Like the (laughs) other day I was like freaking the fuck out, like running around my house. Like when I get these branding visions and downloads, (laughs) like when I do with my clients or my friends, I like lose my shit. Like I can't stop talking. I'm like, oh my God, the downloads are coming in so strong. And I know Marina wants to, her intention is to move to Sedona and her big dream is to create a spa. Cause if you haven't seen the rainbow bathhouse before, it was like a house that she had her house out here in Joshua tree. And each room had like a different theme and the hallways and the art and stuff. But that I, that was such a stepping stone of what, Marina's capable of like creating like a bigger space and so I just see her creating the spa in Sedona at a place where people heal and the crazy energy and the vortex there that she can create this spa with like (laughs) different themed rooms and like dance parties and being this just beautiful beautiful healing space um, for people to express their truth and Remember, I to me, it's like we're just remembering that we're all child of God. We're yeah. all children of God, and we have to keep that childlike wonder alive. There's not a point where we just kill off that inner child. Yeah, they still reign within us, and yeah, definitely. and go from that space. So, I mean, it's been really beautiful because I know you were considering or wanting to buy the house out here, but I, th- I think what's unfolding is something bigger, and I see yeah. it. Yeah, it's been hard. Um, Oops, sorry. I made a weird noise <laughs> from the streak. Um, it's been hard because I moved out here with this vision and did it. And it was like the first time in my life really witnessing like the full spectrum of what my installations would look like and how they would activate and how they would be on a long-term level, not just a temporary level. And my installations were you know mostly like very short term uh starting out at a day maybe three days now maybe two weeks maybe a month max of time you know and witnessing a house that I lived at full time and and was my workshop studio um for two and a half years also host like workshops and dance parties and um you know, my video and photo shoots and other people coming to utilize the space showed me the potential of what can really happen and the power that I have. And I didn't really understand that until here. And I really shed a lot of wounds from my past being here. And I also live on like Joshua Tree, like is my Pluto line in astrocartography. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's just where your planets align in the world map. But anyways, um, 
And yeah, it was hard because I thought I was going to be able to buy this house. I thought I would have found an investor to help me buy it. And my landlord was just asking way too much money for it. And I, you know, as an independent artist, it's just hard to come up with a loan that big. But anyways, when life give you, gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Or you or, make Sabrina quarantine. Or you make watermelon <laughs> uh, margaritas with, with lemons. Um but sorry, <laughs> um, I feel pretty good about adapting and being able to have faith constantly, even in disappointment and in times of like, oh, this is a really shitty situation. I thought I was going to be able to do this and then rerouting my brain to be like, you know, there's something really great around the corner, even if, if it's going to take a half a year, a couple of years, like just wait, just wait, just know, like, and keep having faith. And it's so hard, you know, like it's so hard to keep having faith, but when you can live every day in gratitude and now that I don't have a place and I am in transition to move to Sedona, um, I feel like, yeah, like the fool card, but like knowing that I'm going to land on, on this really beautiful cloud. It's like taking the leap of faith. And that's what I've been doing for years is taking that leap of faith, taking, you know, ju- you know, just like, I don't know what's going to happen if I do this, but let's try it. And I don't know. I just kind of think it's just living on the edge a little bit. <laughs> it makes life more exciting. <laughs> yeah. And also like, when something's not working out, don't force it. And that's been a huge lesson for me in the last few years with relationships, with housing, with friendships, um, with jobs. Like I don't chase anymore. Um, I think that's a big, uh, shift I'd like to help other people realize is like, if you just stop chasing and start relaxing and start focusing on your happiness and your joy, you can attract so much faster. And it's hard, you know, it's like, it's hard when you like, oh, I have to pay for this. How am I going to do this? Blah, 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 blah. And when you can actually just try your best to relax and be in a relaxed state or in a joy state, you are so much more likely to attract the things you want. What a concept. That's what I'm (laughs) really implementing in my daily life is like, I don't know where I'm going to live tonight or the next week or what, because for now I'm going to be floating around for the next month and a half and I'm planning on moving to Sedona in October. Um, and yeah, I just feel like adventure is key to life and not to be controversial, but staying home 24 seven is not healthy and I'm not ashamed to say that. Tell them. <laughs> I just traveled the whole country you know, in a safe way. And you, you can't stop. You can't let society, the government, people like dictate your reality and dictate your life. Like be an independent boss ass bitch person, whoever, whatever it is. It's like, just do you and stop listening to everybody else. Like, you know, I, if I cared about everybody else's opinion, I wouldn't be anywhere. I just like, you, you got to be radically fierce and radically independent, radically autonomy, autonomous in this time. You'll find your truth a lot faster and your passion a lot faster if you stop living in other people's lane. And, you know, with the spa vision I have, it's like literally the ultimate vision of a color temple to help people to create jobs, to help other healers have opportunity to hold space. I mean, I'm here to create space. I'm here to hold space and to use my resources of connections, however that may come, to give opportunity. I believe in healing the collective so our world can be a better place. I believe we should have clean water and access to healthcare and healing as much as possible. And we have to fight for it so Mm -hmm. hard just for the basic just for basics human needs just for basic human needs and it's just you know like we are here as fierce divine feminine energies to realign this world right now and yeah i firmly believe in this mission that i'm on and whoever's listening i hope you can come visit the next chapter of rainbow bath spa rainbow bath house i don't know what it's going to be called but I'm here to spread rainbows and let you soak in them. And that's, that's the real, that's the real tea, you know, 
I'm excited to see. I know <laughs> you're working on other projects as well that like your art is being like planting seeds across the U.S. right now. And I think the beautiful thing that when you and Lizzie were driving through the United States on <laughs> the dream tour <laughs> was that you were really like going to a lot of these places that have kind of either been ignored or aren't really um, showcased as much as like California or yeah. you know what I mean? And just going to these places and bringing your art and sharing your art and blasting up with your truth and your light in that way as well. Yeah. Um, it's really important for me to meet the people that own my art and cause my art is like, they're like my little babies and I leave them and I, I like making an impression of like, this isn't just plexiglass. This is, these are things that will like have longevity and hold joy no matter what. And yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think even just three months ago, how many people were hitting me up for art for their homes. You know, like I thought, you know, we didn't, none of us knew what was going to happen, but I don't know. It's been funny, like seeing how many people are like wanting to have art for their homes now and like, cause everyone's home. And I think it's really beautiful to invest in creatives and to support independent artists and designers and, you know, to keep up that support for each other because I think the more we support handmade, the better our, you know, like how you talk about conscious capitalism. It's like, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have abundance. There's nothing wrong with the energy of money. It's how it's been um, distributed in this reality. And it's time to redistribute funds. It's time for reparations. It's time to take the power back of monetary resources and to put them in the hands of people that really need it and to understand like if I can make a connection with someone who is wealthy of course I will redistribute that as fast as possible like I want I'm like passionately interested in redistributing resources and to creating facilities that are about healing people um all around the world it's you know I see like the work I'm doing, like not just being like, it's, it's not just art to sell. It's, it's creating an atmosphere of deep rooted healing with color therapy and, and cultivating community. You have such yeah. a beautiful community uh, that's so diverse and something that Marina and I have been talking about, something that I've been really passionate about in the last like month or so is while it's been great to see more, um, of course, LGBTQ and, uh, black voices seen and respected. I'm ready to see more of the indigenous and more of people with disabilities. I think yeah. though I think the the group of people that have been the the most marginalized or the least um expressed or uh seen in media has been the disabled. Yeah. Uh, and the indigenous. Yeah. But the disabled you don't see ads of you have been a little bit now. But I think it's important to to think make it more prominent. Yeah. yeah. And just to be able to to showcase all these different beautiful souls that, again, I don't want their I'm like so tired of the labels. Yeah. And we need to all to be to be able to alchemize that. We need to bring more awareness of it to not make it so taboo to talk about it yeah. in that way. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing because I think after like the whole Black Lives Matter, a lot of companies really reevaluated like, well, we need to start showing more black voices, which yeah. I think was great. I think the next layer will be the indigenous and people with disabilities. Yeah. And that goes for not just fashion, that goes for film industry and television. Mm -hmm. Because as someone, I grew up in the television industry with my dad and my, and my mom, and I... I'm very like anti mainstream media at this point. And I, and I studied film like at UC Santa Cruz, which was mainly like kind of a more fine art film, not to study like mainstream bankability, like cinema. I am pretty passionate about getting people's voices heard that haven't had their stories been told before. 
you know, I'm not like super tied in Hollywood at all anymore or ever really. It was just like growing up in that world. But, you know, I'd like to use the privilege I have and the skills I have with film and, you know, shooting and editing, like to help indigenous people and people of color and disabled people, like, you know, in any way I can, I just feel like it's just not mainstream enough and not enough people know about their life and their stories and the struggles that they have and the past, you know, it's just been so whitewashed, so um, erased and eraser culture is just such a big thing. Like we're not taught nearly <laughs> like we're, 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 we're spoon fed such a lie at such a young age. I mean, even just with like, I, I, my birthday falls on Thanksgiving every nine years. And like, I grew up celebrating Thanksgiving and I haven't been celebrating Thanksgiving for years now because it's a fucked up holiday and I don't believe in celebrating it at all. And yeah, like, it's my least favorite holiday. And it sucks because it's like, you know, I, I'm, I, f I feel very passionate about getting people who have been unseen to be represented in these industries because as someone who's grown up in that world and I've been working in fashion for the last 10 years as a brand, but also as a photographer. And I, I'm just ready to see that shift of this is just the normal. It's normal to have a diverse campaign campaign and a diverse group of people like you know it's just it should be normalized and it should be just expected it shouldn't just be this like stigma or like tokenism you know it should be celebrated all body types should be celebrated you know like the body positive movement on social media has been one of the biggest like I think positives of social media. It's been a, such a blessing. And that's what I think we need to also start focusing on rather than being a victim to social media. Mm -hmm. Let's start focusing on our wins. And I think that has a lot yeah. to do individually. Individually, a lot of us have a hard time celebrating our own wins. Yeah. So it can be harder to see that reflected of celebrating like the small wins that are happening yeah. by people who are being brave, people who are being vulnerable, people who are like unfuckwithable mm -hmm. and just like, being like, this is who I am. And we haven't had that deeper level of empowerment in a long time, if ever, at least yeah, in America. Definitely. I mean, shit. <laughs> it's pretty amazing seeing like the generation that's like 10, 15 years younger than us and how they don't give a fuck. They don't. They're just like, <laughs> they're, they're, they're more PC than any other generation at this time which is and so like radical about you know just their individuality which is pretty special and inspiring it's courageous yeah because i mean a lot of those those kids and young adults like yeah they they are i mean i think about them all the time that that's the like they're from a new millennia mm -hmm. so their dna is coded so differently than us they yeah. have a whole new millennia we're the last of the patriarchal system Shame. which is why we're the we're the bridge yeah that's i do believe that uh millennials are the the alchemists like we are the ones that are the ones that are deciding what we will and will not take into yeah this uh new era because a lot of us like we're 89 so mm -hmm. we're the last of what the 11 years of a millennia mm -hmm. not even a century but a millennia so you're still in those pubescent years during that time. Yeah. And we, you know, during that thing about it, like we had like 9-11 during puberty and then all we've seen is shit and war and corruption mm -hmm. since, you know, for the last 19 years. Yeah. And the kids that are young that are like in high school, just starting college, they're the, the post 9-11 era mm -hmm. and so they've grown up with a whole bunch of shit and also grew up with books like hunger games and stuff where they've been fighting tyranny you know they were taught to fight tyranny and to yeah. question everything and to stand with integrity and truth yeah and i think that's why our generation has done so much of that deeper inner child healing work yeah is because we're seeing the kids just like so radical radical authenticity. embodied and again unfuck with a bull so I mean, I'm thoroughly looking forward to see how all of this continues to unfold. Like I've been sharing 2020 has been the ultimate blessing in my life 
it's been the most profound year. The first time I feel like I can breathe and the first time I actually have like pure faith in what's to come because I'm not, I've done enough work on myself to not be bombarded by the tyranny and the um, false light, the subconscious programming, the mind control, the manipulation, because that's what I grew up with and I've already alchemized that. So now I can have that higher perspective to see like, this is bullshit, you know, and I'm aware of it and I don't consent to it. There's a lot of demonic intense energies like I talked about in my reptilian episode like that shit is real these lower dimensional fear based things it's part of like our society and we get to choose that it doesn't we we don't consent to it taking away and stealing away our sovereign power yeah and I think through radical art and radical self-expression and radical self-reliance we are able to really again be in that autonomy stand in our truth with integrity and live out why we came here during these times yeah and i'm i mean i'm grateful for people like you who are just so radically expressive of who you are and don't give a fuck it's been very inspiring for me (laughs) to like get into the space where i can just be me and again but like I'm, i'm a projector in human design so having that um that urge or that support um is like that invitation of like all right let's do that and then once i do it like watch out world because the bitch is out you know and like the babe who's in total connection to herself is here and i just really honor you and i i thoroughly respect you as a businesswoman and uh, (laughs) a creative and someone who's truly living out their soul's mission and so again it's been such a a treat having you here it's been it's like filling a void of like (laughs) wanting community here i've lived here for three years and never felt like i've had community and here with like you being here and our friend hannah it's like the two women i've resonated most with in the past three years these are the things i've needed to like really see and Mm -hmm. work with to feel that completion yeah of work um done in joshua tree the last piece is writing my book which i'm almost done with and hopefully by the time this is recording it's done um and just really preparing myself for the next evolution of that too so um to wrap up i just want to ask a few lightning round questions yeah Uh, what does sovereignty mean to you it means radically living your truth and feeling wholeness on your own what animal totem would you say is your greatest guide Mm, I would say a bobcat and if I can pick another one, a hummingbird. (laughs) Wow. I was thinking you were going to say your butterflies, but (laughs) we've been talking about this the whole time. Yeah, I guess. Well, damn, I didn't connect insects with animals, I guess, but as insect, yes, butterfly, (laughs) animal, bobcat, bird, hummingbird, (laughs) if I could do all three. (laughs) <laughs> Perfect. And what would you say to younger Marina? <sighs> All your dreams will come true. Mm. And you are loved and you will you have magic at every every chance you can get. You have magic through your fingertips. Mm. And what's the last little <laughs> nugget of wisdom you want to share to whoever's listening? Um, I want to remind people to go outside and get sunshine and to ground if you can. Um, I think it's really important to connect to the earth right now and to spend like five to ten minutes like putting your bare feet into the earth. Um, and also focus on keeping your immunity up, researching immune system supports. And don't be in fear because that weakens your immune system. Yeah. Fear-based programming has been implemented in this reality for so long. And please don't feed that fear. It's so easy to shut off your TV, get into nature. It'll save your life. (laughs) I truly believe in that. Amazing. And where can we find more of you? Um, so Instagram is probably the biggest thing, which is at Marina Feeney on Instagram. Um, I have, I have a YouTube too. It's very slowly growing. I'm Marina Feeney on there. It's basically, if you just Google me, there's all the social media outlets that are available. Uh, and my website has some really fun content, um, that I don't really post on social on like Instagram or anything. Um, 
Yeah. So I would say like my website, marinafini.com, Instagram, YouTube. I don't have a Twitter, but yeah, that's probably the best way. And to buy your jewelry as well. Yeah. I post my jewelry on my stories on my main Instagram. And then I have a jewelry Instagram with like customer photos, which is at marinafini on me. And then if you'd like to see what Rainbow Bathhouse looked like, um, there's actually an Instagram that I created for that two years ago called Rainbow Bathhouse. At Rainbow Bathhouse, you can see past photo shoots and um, workshops that we've done there. And uh, yeah, hope hope to see you in the next installation. And hopefully you have a healing in my spa in Sedona. <laughs> I keep having the vision of it. I'm like, I was asked Marina, I was like running around my house the other day, like, Oh my God, Queen. Like, I'm seeing this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to find the investors in Sedona. Yes. I just believe in it. Calling it up. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for being like the ultimate house guest that's yeah. been so, like infusing <laughs> your medicine and your brightness and love. Yeah. And it's been such healing medicine for me, especially coming up to my lightning, being struck by lightning anniversary. Yeah. It's been such a way for me to really heal the last of that inner child wounds and pain and just like infusing it with like rainbow plasma and any, mm-hmm. any other holes that may be in my auric field or anything with your yeah. light and your presence so Aww. i appreciate really you good. and <laughs> thank you everyone for tuning in check out and see what marina has because she's just such a ray of sunshine and Aww. rainbows and i'm just so grateful for you and Aww, I'm grateful for so you. Great. <laughs> seriously and thank, thank you, you everyone thanks thank for tuning you. in we'll see you soon Oops. take care <laughs>